Hey, we're getting ready to do this live cast. So first, subscribe to the channel, wherever that is on here. Be sure you like or comment on the video and definitely check out yourlearningbody.com, which is open right now for new members. Thanks. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, it's like a pleasure to talk with people about what has, is, has happened for them to be inspired by other people's journeys. We kind of sometimes get a little stuck in our own and we need to hear from somebody else about how they got maybe unstuck or felt like they were able to move forward. So I'm going to dive right on in here and invite our first person in. And this is Pamela Paul getting ready to join us. Pamela Paul. Hey, how are you, Pamela? You there? I'm good. How are you? Oh, great. So let me just try to grab you and put you into a little spotlight here with us and see if we can be on screen together. Okay. Pamela is a, was a strong woman, is a strong woman, a power lifter, and boy, she was living her life. And then something happened on the way to uh, the next event or the next stage of her life that kind of changed things for her. And Pamela, why don't you just jump on in and start telling us a little bit about your journey? Yeah, so I was a competitive strong woman, which is uh, kind of that stuff you see on TV. I lifted the big stones. I towed fire trucks, um, you know, that kind of stuff, just to give you a idea of what I did. And I was Larry's um, addicted to that. Larry watches yeah. that all the time. My husband, Larry, my partner, Larry Wells, he watches it all the time. So I come in and we sit down and watch some of it. It's so impressive. <laughs> and it's really, really fun. Um, but I was at a national competition and I got tripped doing uh, what is a single finger, which is basically flipping a big heavy pipe over, it's on a hinge and you flip it over. Um, it was a 400 pound pipe and I got tripped by the spotter. Um, and in the moment, I didn't think anything was wrong. The next day I was like, hmm, my legs feel a little funny, but it was a big heavy petition and I didn't think anything of it right away. Um, little while down the road, I was having trouble sensing and operating my left side. And that got progressively worse until I was finally diagnosed with a neurological injury that seems to have stemmed from that incident. Um, and I got to a point where I was actually walking with a pretty severe limp um, after being like a literally nationally ranked athlete. Um, and that limp sort of started and escalated pretty rapidly. Um, and so I went through a whole discovery process on what is going on and what's happening. And, you know, like I said, was diagnosed with this uh, neurological injury and had a lot of trouble getting back to some semblance of what I would think of as normal life. Um, I basically, the way it was explained to me is that my brain map of, you know, like where your body is in space was damaged. Um, very similar to a stroke victim, um, although there's no physical component there. And I, at the time, was Facebook friends with Scott Forrester, who I believe was a guest at one of the summits, um, or at least he invited me to my first summit. And that's how I eventually got here um, as a member of your learning body. And I'll admit that it took me a little bit. Like I liked the summit, it was cool, but I wasn't quite ready to pounce right away um, until I started struggling. You know, I, I had some treatment plans in place that seemed like they were doing okay. And then I got to a point where I couldn't get past a certain, um, a certain place in my recovery. And then I think I joined a, you know, a second summit and was like, hmm, maybe this is something that I need. Um, I'll be honest, it was a little bit too soft of a skill for me to, to cling on to right away when I, I was still doing, you know, like I tow tire trucks, uh, fire trucks for fun. Um, but as my, you know, condition continued and I, I started having more trouble, um, 
I needed another way to get my body that feedback and that focus um, that I had always gotten from lifting before. And it needed to be something I could do even on a bad day when I was having a lot of symptoms. Um, and that's kind of how I got to your learning body is I was kind of struggling for another way to have a tool that I could use to help myself as opposed to, you know, looking for more treatment externally because that wasn't particularly helping. And it was quite financially draining as well. Well, let's try that. Is that okay? That's much better for me. I'll just, I'll stop using my headset. So I think <laughs> I came into your learning body about um, nine months ago. So I, I'm, uh, you joined not quite, a, not quite a year ago. So you joined the on, online your learning body community. And, and I could see right away, Pamela, that you were uh, used to larger movements and that you're a good mover. I mean, you're not somebody who is not used to moving. Uh, you've worked a lot with your body so that even despite the fact that you have this neurological challenge going on, it was, it was quite clear at the beginning that I would call it, uh, you're an intelligent mover is what I would say. You know something about your body. That was, I could tell you knew something about your body. So, so now you have this you know, someone who knows a lot about their body and knows how a lot, a lot to, about how to use their body as leverage, like I, ideal leverage points, which is a lot of what we do in the Feldenkrais work actually is the, 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 the mechanics of the, of the right sweet spot for any particular movement. Uh, and you started out going, oh, it's a little slow, a little soft. And I know you started right in with the classes and doing the live classes. So how has it been for you? So I really liked the live class format for me. It was something that, because I was a little resistant to the slowness, like having that like sort of mental obligation of, all right, I'd signed up for this class, I should do it, um, really kind of helped me form that habit around it and started to influence my thinking. Um, I know I shared in a previous class that, you know, mostly I didn't think of my bones as particularly useful other than they're a nice solid structure to put muscles around. Um, and now I have, you know, a greater appreciation of how my bones influence my movement and a great sensation of how the joints function as more than just, you know, a pivot point so that I can lift something heavy. Um, there's kind of a, a very beautiful quality of movement that I'm more sensitive to. Mm -hmm. Um, that is really an interesting change for me because I always had a really strong sense of movement, but it was more of my body as a whole. And now I feel like I have insight into the parts and the way they move together. Sort of like I can hear all the different instruments in the symphony. Um, and that is something that's really helped me. And it's also helped me, the live classes have helped me sort of identify these sort of what I think of as, you know, movement opportunities during the day where I'll find myself and it's like, oh, hey, look, I'm reaching for that. I can use this nice, you know, like rotation that we did in class the other day and, you know, like have this little 30 second to two minute, like little movement class of my own. Um, that's like a nice way to sort of mix it into your day. Um, I think I use the analogy of you should have a little snack of movement. Um, and so those things kind of really not just change the way I move, but change the way I think about movement. And that was a really helpful evolution for me in my own recovery and uh, maintenance. Does it feel like it's also uh, doing something about this remapping of your brain that since that's kind of part of what you mentioned earlier, do you, if a, a, I, I hear it in your bones for sure. Like that's, that, that never was a part of your brain map is what you're saying. And you didn't really know you were, if it was, you weren't aware of it, but does it, are there other moments where you're like, ah, that feels like I'm learning something completely new about myself or. Yes. Just the other day, I actually did um, one of the videos in my study buddy group that I have formed. I now have friends in both Hawaii and Canada, um, small bonus, large bonus. Um, 
And we picked a video from the Your Learning Body, and it's the one about feet and the different arches of your feet. And it was eye-opening to me how difficult that was for me. Because to be honest, a lot of the lessons have been pretty easy. I mean, beautiful and lovely, but not particularly challenging for me. And this foot lesson, I was like, I cannot do that with my toes. I like, I understand because I'm a personal trainer and I have some anatomy background, but I'm like, I know about the arches. I cannot, particularly on my left side, which is my injured side, like I could get the medial arch, no problem. The other two arches I had to like focus so hard on. And so it gave me this really great way to start to um, identify areas of deficit and like yeah. gently kind of explore them and try to get them to be like, all right, hey, lefty, wake up. Here we go. We're going to move now. Um, and the, those sort of little inputs for me have been very, very helpful in my recovery. And, um, you know, there, there's no end to the value I find in that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I can see how the short videos for you for mostly would be too easy. And then you'd run occasionally run across one that was more challenging. I can totally see how you need the longer, uh, meatier Feldenkrais lessons that really, uh, really call you to attention in, in a big depth way. So that even though if you were going to do the movement pattern at the end, you might feel like I can do that movement pattern. That's no problem. I'll just do it right. Uh, by going through the process, you go, oh, 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 yeah, there's, there's some, there's some new territory there for me. And you wrote the other day that you're thinking about doing a Feldenkrais training now. Yeah, I, I will admit that I have, um, I have that as a, a long-term goal. I'm not quite ready to start on that path yet. I feel like I'm a little bit too new. Um, but some of the ways that this has changed me is like the, the hip hinge lesson we did many weeks ago in like the last live class on, um, I don't remember the move better, feel better mm -hmm. segment, um, like really influenced the way I teach how to deadlift mm -hmm. um, to get somebody to feel that hip hinge better because I was, you know, like we started that. I'm like deadlifting, great. I've never deadlifted in Feldenkrais, um, <laughs> but it's a very similar. <laughs> that was the less is, similar... that was the less is more series. Okay, so I can clarify. That was our oh, less yes. is more series in your learning body and how to look at uh, take something from a Feldenkrais lesson and apply it directly to function. Yeah, in your daily activities. Yeah. Yeah, I apologize for getting that one wrong. Okay. I'm like, I'm not it's... sure about this. I'm like, I loved the class. I forget the name of it. Um, but yeah, it was such an interesting approach to hinging the hips, which I mean, literally I've been lifting since I was 14 years old. I used to hack into the scheduling system in high school and put myself in the weight training course. So that's, uh, that's how long I've been doing this. And it was just a, such a beautiful, different approach to get to the same path. And I, I personally find a really beautiful harmony in both the slower stuff of, you know, Feldenkrais and Bones for Life, where you're sort of almost, I think of it as a moving meditation a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, but how it then applies to moving in the real world, doing real things, whether that's carrying the groceries up the stairs or what have you. I mean, if you're not well stacked, carrying the groceries upstairs is a lot of effort. If you are well stacked, it's no effort, um, you know, for, for people who can, who have that ability. But so that's, that's something that I, I've always really found really fascinating is those connections between whatever modality you're functioning in and real life and how different modalities approach them from different places, but get to that same spot. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's been a good value for you in a lot of different ways. Would you also say it's been a good value for you financially? Is it, is it worth the money? Definitely. I have spent way more money on things that were not at all helpful. Um, oh, and sorry. one of the things. <laughs> shouldn't laugh at that. <laughs> it's okay. I be sorry for it. No, it's, I mean, it's, 
you know, the whole reason I got diagnosed is my chiropractor went to a seminar with a, a functional neurologist. Like I went through the traditional medicine route and I spent literally thousands of dollars trying to chase treatments that were no help at all or actively made me worse. Mm. Um, so I know that my situation is unique, but for somebody out there that is either new to thinking about movement, this is a really accessible way to get that guidance. Um, and, you know, I've been a personal trainer for a long time. I've been a, an athlete for literally as long as I can remember. I would say the coaching within this program um, is so accessible and easy to follow for even people that don't have great um, a great movement background. I will say that for me personally, I learned a lot about coaching from this, which it was the side benefit that was unexpected. But from a value standpoint, you're not going to get better instruction unless you're paying one on one prices mm -hmm. for the same thing. And this is a much, much better value um, for your dollar than trying to go one on one prices, because that's just there's no way to make that financially accessible for people. Um, and and this is a really great way to get some good detailed and easy to follow instruction um, for people that need that kind of guidance. And, you know, the, the whole you are learning body um, library, if you will, is really great at like, you know, for example, yesterday I wanted to do a lesson and I was like, I'm feeling kind of lazy. I want to do a lying down lesson that's not too long. Right. So I just went in and said, okay. This is my search parameter. Boom, here we go. Frog leg lesson. Let's have at it. Um, so you really get what you need at your fingertips, which is really nice. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Pamela. I'm so excited. I mean, I've loved watching you in this, these, these few months. I'm so excited to continue to see how you grow and um, and not only reclaim, you know, reclaim your uh your love uh, or your passion for movement and, and being a strong woman, but also, um, you know, you're expanding and somehow in, in your, in your love and your passion for movement now. So that's really exciting. Thanks for sharing. I know yes, I'm really enjoying helpful. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Yeah. It's wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? It's fantastic. We're going to go on here to Hillary Hoyle. We have like really different really different um, stories today. And Hillary, uh, I think is across the pond, as I recall, are you in England, UK? And um, she started about three years ago, but she, she actually kind of missed her first year with us. I mean, she had an idea when she signed up, but she kind of missed her first year with us because life did happen for her. So, hey, Hillary. I'm not, let me see, I'm not getting you unmuted. So let me get you unmuted again. Let's try that again. Can you unmute yourself there? Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Hi, everybody. Lovely to be here. It's lovely to have you, Hillary. So I remember, really just became first aware of you, uh, really when you sent an email for your annual renewal, your first annual renewal, and you said, hey, uh, I don't really know what the heck I'm even doing here. Can you give me a clue? Can you tell us a little bit about what happened for you? Sure. Um, I, I knew why I'd joined in the first place. That was very clear in my mind. So uh, at the beginning of 2018, I was due to be 70 that year. Uh, I've had flat feet since I was a child and I've managed that throughout my life. I've got a good team of people around me. I've had orthotics, hard, soft. I know there's lots of views on orthotics, but I've, you know, I've had lots of interventions, but not surgery. Um, and um, because I was aging, as we all do, I felt that I really, I had the time and I felt that I really needed to kind of get onto this and, and find some support for my body um, that I wasn't currently accessing. Um, I, I, I wouldn't exactly say I was a swimmer. I swam regularly. Um, I've always chosen, uh, apart from when I was very young, I've always chosen activities that I felt were beneficial to my body. So I was swimming, I was doing yoga, 
I was riding an exercise bike and they were all really helpful. Um, and then I happened to be listening right at the beginning of 2018 to a podcast on natural health in, in the UK. Uh, and Irene Lyon was being interviewed, who has also been on, on one of the summits. Um, and she is, um, she is a, a nervous system practitioner and, and very experienced in that area. Um, and I was absolutely hooked by what she had to say about the brain and neuroplasticity. Um, and I found her so inspirational that I finished, what, I finished listening to the podcast and started doing some research. I bought Norman Doidge's book on the brain that heals itself. Um, I started searching on uh, YouTube for anything I could find because actually Feldenkrais in the UK isn't terribly accessible. Um, and uh, I just suddenly discover, started discovering all sorts of wonderful things and wonderful people. Um, I found Ruthie Alon's videos and they moved me so much and thinking about the age that she was when, um, when uh, you know, she, she video, recorded those videos. And I was inspired by her and thought, well, you know, I know she'd had a lifetime of doing it, but I thought, well, if she can do it, so can I. <laughs> um, but I still hadn't joined up at that point. Uh, but in the meantime, I was researching access in the UK and I did manage to find a Feldenkrais practitioner. Um, and I went for some um, functional integration sessions. So I had five successive sessions, which really, really helped me. Um, and then in the intervening period, I still carried on with my, my YouTubes. Um, and then I, you opened up, I'm not quite sure when you first opened up your learning body, uh, Cynthia, but it was in 2018, August, September that I joined. Um, and at that point, my husband became ill um he developed some health problems and for a year um for the first few months it wasn't too bad but it wasn't being resolved um and for a year he was at home in hospital at home in hospital and I was his carer um I sort of fought his corner I you know I was I supported him in every way possible um and it was exhausting it was absolutely exhausting. They tried so many things to help him and, and nothing was successful. Um, and uh, coming round to um, August, and my husband died in August 2019, I suddenly realized that my renewal for membership had been taken. And I started thinking about, had I benefited during the course of that year? And very stupidly decided that I hadn't, although I've actually made a note of the fact that um, I was exhausted permanently. But at the end of each day, I could lie down on the floor and do a few of the things that I'd learned from watching, from being on the summit, watching, you know, various videos and so on. And even for those few minutes, I felt that those things rebalanced, those movements rebalanced my body and were restorative. And I just took heart from that. So, um, Cynthia, you and I had a, an email conversation. Um, I said I wasn't sure about renewing. You said uh, that you'd look back over my history that year and that, you know, I probably used it more than I thought. There was absolutely no pressure from you at all. Um, and you were very happy to refund if I didn't want to go ahead. Um, but you said that you felt it might be beneficial for me, particularly emotionally. And oh boy, has it been. Um, I think that, you know, so, so my husband died in August 2019. I went through the next four months. I, I don't think I would have found the strength to support my husband in the way I had if I hadn't learned what I'd learned during the course of that year. And then, of course, we went into um, 2020 and COVID struck. I know. I thought about you so much when <clears throat> COVID struck. I thought, oh, man, just like coming on the tails of, of um, the situation for you really struck me. Um, and, you know, people think that we don't gain personalized relationships online sometimes. But I remember that email exchange so vividly. And, uh, and then, you know, I, when I, and you, you started, we started to have live classes, right? Which we had yeah. to have 
before. Yeah. I mean, you joined, it was all pre-recorded, but because of COVID, we added live classes and we'll keep them now because my gosh, it's just a phenomenal thing for all of us, me included, uh, to be in them together. Um, and then to be able to see your face there and to know like, okay, here's a connection for Hillary, you know, and, and really for me and for many people, but for someone who had just come out of such a difficult year to go straight into COVID. And, and it had been particularly difficult. I won't bore you with all the details, but my husband opted for um, an elective amputation above the knee. So we'd already gone through the trauma of all that. And, uh, and, and that was actually successful, but there was a deeper problem which wasn't uncovered right until a few weeks before he died. Um, and uh, so, you know, I had all that trauma to deal with as well. And I, I, you know, it's it's only with counselling and, and also with my Feldenkrais work, I feel very strongly that I've realised how much of his trauma I carried. And actually, I still am. Um, and, and the trauma of one, you know, one thing on top of another like that, I am still holding in my body. I'd love to say that I feel that my physical body is much improved because of Feldenkrais. It certainly was initially. But at the moment, it isn't. And I do deeply feel that that trauma is trapped in my body. Um, I, I look forward to a time when I'm able to release it more and more. And hopefully that will begin to happen now with the fact that the UK is, is beginning to open up. Um, but I think you've been an absolute lifesaver for me. You've been a family to me. You've been community. Um, it's given me access to people all around the world I and mean, the chat rooms have been wonderful um, and I truly thank you for the experience I'm yeah. I feel very blessed thank you thank you you know I, I thank you for for taking the risk to 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 let us be a part of your healing and it does take time and I think it also takes purposeful engagement with different kinds of uh, explorations. I don't think they all have to be paid for necessarily explorations, but different kinds of explorations to release trauma and, and to feel like you're able to start to reclaim back your own life. And I, I know that doesn't maybe feel like it's happening yet, but I think it is happening. It's like the substructure of it is getting laid down for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just, just to, you know, go back to my husband again, I couldn't have read Norman Doidge's book at a better time because after his amputation, he, obviously he suffered with um, phantom limb and so on. And I actually, I, I was expecting that, I understood it. I was able to share what I understood with him and that was so helpful for both of us. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the whole thing has just been an incredible learning experience for me, incredible. Thank you so much for- And great, great value for money because of the fact that you're sort of hooked in at that starting price, it's just, yeah, it never goes up, does it? Once, once, no, once you once you can, once you commit to a monthly current, yeah, you can take your I, price. I, I pay four times that for my spa membership. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. Uh, we're we're very moved, uh, Hillary, by your perseverance, uh, your perseverance, and your uh, you know reaching out for the things that were available to you and using them. And we know you're just gonna keep getting, you're gonna keep getting better and you will start feeling the physical benefits as well. It'll, it'll happen uh, for sure. Thank Thanks for being such a vital member of the community. We appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, okay, just so different, different, different stories. And I think it's so important to realize that we have a lot of variety. There's a lot of similarities, right? There's a lot of similarities and that life happens. And then we, we figure out how can we go on? And, and for a long time, it's just going on. And then it's like, oh no, I don't wanna just go on. I wanna, I wanna come out of that surviving thing. I wanna see if I can get beyond survival into some kind of level of thriving. So let's take a listen to Rachel Taylor. Let's let her join us. Hey, Rachel. And let me get you unmuted. I get probably my guidelines here. I think I got it now. Let's see. Can you grab that? Yes. Hi. Hi, Rachel. I met you uh, probably like four or five years ago in Cincinnati at a couple of classes that you came to, a couple of series that you came to with me. 
and you're a yoga teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been one of your primary interests has been in yoga. And so why don't you just tell us a little bit about what actually drew you into Feldenkrais or then also your learning body? Yeah, well, like you said, I took some classes with you a few years ago, and that was um, around the time I was kind of transitioning into different kinds of body work. Um, so I was doing a lot of traditional yoga, like you, know, you think of the vinyasa flows, you know, your sun salutations, downward dog, that, that kind of thing. So it's very active and very muscular and very... Um, yeah, very active work. And so around the time that I came to you, I started just kind of slowing down. Um, I started doing more yin yoga, and that's ultimately what I went to study for my yoga certification. And yeah, it's just a different, different sort of practice that really gets you into your body. Um, I use Yin and Feldenkrais and Qigong. Um, they all they all really work work well together to kind of slow down the whole system. You know, we're very we're very doing doing um, society. You know, we're very active. Um, everything moves really quickly and we're everything's really external based too. You know, you're always seeking like, what can I get out there and bring in what's out there? And you're just like grabbing and just like, it's, um, yeah, it's just very, um, it just feels very cluttered. And I've found Feldenkrais and ATM lessons um, through your, um, your learning body membership to be very centering and it brings me into my body and kind of reacquaints me with, with my body, because though I, I am a yoga teacher and um, you, you think I'd be like really in touch with my body, I am actually much more in my head and, or even like out, out here, like it takes me, it takes me a long time to bring myself into, into the center and um, really move, move from that, that awareness within. So I felt, found the Feldenkrais um, lessons and your membership to be really, really helpful for, um, for helping me to access my body. <laughs> so it, it, that's beautiful. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I appreciate your honesty and saying, Hey, I'm, yeah, I, I mean, most of us are in these works because we needed them. Right. <laughs> so, so we did it wasn't that we were good at it and therefore we went into the field. It's that we needed it for ourselves. And that's what motivates us and inspires us for it. So I thank you for that honesty that, oh yeah, I really, I tend to be out here somewhere. I'm not even sure I'm always in my head, but if I am in my head or not in my head, it's out here. It's not really in my body. So that's so helpful. Do you feel like uh, for you, are you somebody who like likes the live classes or do you like the library more or do you do you use both? Uh, yeah, both. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, I signed up, you know, before we had the live classes and um, I've been using the library for a while and the library is really nice because you have different themes. So if you want to work on like your shoulders or your back or your, your pelvis, you know, you have different, um, different options to choose. And there's a, you know, there's a selection of classes for, for that. So that's, so that's really helpful. Um, and then I do the live classes whenever I can, because it's, it's just nice to have that, um, you know, collective atmosphere. So yeah, they've both been, they've both been great. <laughs> and does it influence your yoga teaching then, do you think? Um, my, my teaching, I think indirectly it does. It's more, um, it's more for um, my relationship with my body and being able to um, kind of recognize how things move together and realize my my natural range of motion and my natural alignment with gravity because oftentimes you know you go into a yoga class and the teacher gives you instructions do this do this and do this and you know a lot of yoga classes are based on aesthetic alignment so it's you you have your feet this way you have your body this way and it's um you know, you don't really connect with your body as much as, as I think you do, or you, you could, you know, especially using these Feldenkrais lessons. So it's helped me just um, come into my body. And then I think that expresses in my teaching too, because I'm more, 
I'm more aware of my unique variability and I can see it more in my students. And I think somehow that transmits through how I teach also, just having that, having that awareness that, you know, everybody is very unique. You know, we all have different skeletons. We all have different ranges of motions. We all have different ways our bodies work. And so I can bring that into my classes and offer different, um, different suggestions and different, um, different sequences, just how, you know, how you're gonna um, arrange your body, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, there's there's things that you can get from yoga, of course, that you can't get from doing Feldenkrais. And, uh, and there's things you can get from doing Pamela's strong woman or uh, weightlifting, uh, powerlifting kinds of things that you can't for sure get from Feldenkrais. But it is something that happens when there's uh, uh, an end goal to achieve that uh, and that makes it a little harder to just be in the experience of yourself. And so there, I think that one of the really key things that Feldenkrais work offers is yes, there's a lesson, but there's a lot of time to just be in the experience with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I've discovered so much of like how, how I'm moving and where I'm moving from. Um, you know, a lot of times we think, well, we move our, our legs this way, our arms this way, but it's really like, if you can really come to your center, and that's a key practice of Qigong too, you know, move from your center, and, you know, and then I understand it in my head, but it's, you know, until I really started working with, with the lessons, um, you know, you really start to feel it, and you really start to get a sense for, like where where the movement is initiated and how you know how everything's connected and it's really yeah it's really a beautiful process of of self discovery and um, you know you can do corrective exercises you can do alignment practice you know you can do all these things to try to fix your body but I think these lessons are just so valuable for for really discovering and really becoming aware of how your unique body is is formed and how you move and just it's um it's very sweet <laughs> very sweet oh i like that thank you rachel so much for joining us i i know that your 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 story your uh, experience will inspire someone and someone that needs that inspiration so thanks for coming on line with us i know this is not necessarily your favorite thing to get out and speak in, in public as it is not for a lot of these folks. So I just want to say what a big uh, round of applause to give all of them, right? Because uh, I think it may be not the first first choice for any of them, except maybe Pamela and might be a little more used to, but I think maybe not the first choice for everybody. So I really appreciate you doing it today, Rachel. Cool. Thank you. And it's fun to have you. It's fun to have you in the community. Thanks. Okay, we've got one more to go. We were supposed to have five, as I said at the beginning, Elise's father is actually quite ill, so she needed to drop out and work on surviving this week. And uh, now we're going to go over to Jenny Doctor, who I had the pleasure of meeting this uh, about a year. Well, COVID makes my mind a little bit unclear, but um, let me just pull her up here. COVID makes my mind a little unclear, but I think I met her about two and three, was it three years ago already? Three years ago. And uh, let me get her sound here. There we go. There we go. Three years ago. And um, she is, uh, she, she moved into Cincinnati, I think not too much before that, perhaps. I mean, it hadn't been too long. Well, is at the, uh, Conservatory College of Music and has our own rich history in music and in archival music. And hi, hi, Jenny. Hi there. Um, yeah, I, I used to be a performing musician a long time ago, um, but I had to stop performing because I, I've uh, suffered from chronic pain since I was about 17. Mm -hmm um first in my hands and then um in my legs um especially my left side um 
And that was what first brought me to Feldenkrais in um, the 1980s um, to try and um, help me to keep performing, although it, it didn't work. Um, but that was okay. I mean, at least it got me um, back to being functioning again and it gave me a way to help myself which is what I really liked about Feldenkrais is that it, it um, at, at that time I had only private, uh, I, it, there wasn't anything online, of course, in the 1980s, um, but, but it, it gave me a whole sequence of things that I could work on uh, on my own outside of the instruction. I used to tape record uh, cassettes. Um, all my lessons, and then I, I would play them back and I would do them. And, and the, the, the main thing about why it was important to tape record them was it helped with the timing to help keep the slowness of it and help me remember to take the breaks. And it also to help me remember to breathe, because that's always been the biggest problem for me is I just, the pain keeps me from breathing. Mm -hmm. I forget to breathe. Um, and I sort of, you know, got myself back to health and that was it. And then um, I had an, a fall in uh, 2000 and I broke my kneecap and it triggered um, a new pain condition that, you know, the kneecap healed, but unfortunately the, the new pain condition, the it, 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 CR, uh, chronic um, pain syndrome, CRPS, um, Chronic, I can't remember. Chronic regional pain syndrome. Yes, thank you. I don't know why that, because I'm That's in okay. all sorts of people, just, it just went out of my head, right. um, was triggered. And um, I was actually living in the UK then, Hillary, and um, I, I lived for many, many years in the UK. And I was, I was able to find um, Feldenkrais. I was teaching at the Trinity College of Music. And actually on staff at Trinity, um, we had... Feldenkrais practitioners as part of the people who helped work with the musicians and with the dancers there. And so I actually was able, I think in London, it's easier to find um, Feldenkrais practitioners and maybe in the rest of the country because I moved to York later and I couldn't find anybody. So I, I understand which is what Hillary meant. Um, out, but anyway, I was able to ha have a, a wonderful person I worked with again privately and um but then i moved back to the united states and um when i uh came to cincinnati i uh my job the circumstances of the the way the job worked and also um some problems um where i work oh, the elevators don't work very well and i had to walk up some stairs one day when i shouldn't have I, i'm actually a wheelchair user um, but the elevator wasn't working. So I tried to do the stairs and it, it made me much, much worse. And so I, I just thought, okay, the only thing that's going to help me, uh, is Feldenkrais. <laughs> I've got to see if I can find somebody. And it turned out that actually Cynthia was right down the street from the conservatory, which I hadn't realized. And so I started having private sessions with you cynthia mm -hmm. which was great but i was i was in really pretty not good shape when i saw you i was really afraid to try and move at that point um which uh is sort of part of my condition i get to the point where i i mean i feel like what pamela said i'm almost the opposite of pamela but actually we have a lot of the same problems it's neurological problems but whereas she is this amazing body that she can work with i have this like sort of really disappointing body that just never has i've always worked in my head because like my body's always just been fighting me my whole life and um and so i i was afraid actually wasn't i cynthia to really let you do a whole lot with me and yeah, then it was, it was really quite a, an exploration for both of us wasn't it to try and find the places where it wouldn't trigger that, that so much of that fear in you um and allow for some improvement and um and then COVID hit and then COVID hit and i i mean and it actually turned out I think you're going to tell me it turned out to be a good thing for you. Yeah, uh, I was really nervous because I'd never done classes. Um, 
But what was really great, um, and so I think maybe this is what's really useful for people to hear, is because, first of all, I loved the community. And I think others have talked about this. I've, I've been in um, small sessions with both Hillary and Pamela. Rachel, maybe you as well. I don't remember you so well. I remember very much Pamela, because I think at the beginning of your, um, I, I remember very much conversations we had in Hillary too. We definitely have all um, grown together and I loved hearing what other people had to say. It helped me so much in my own learning to hear others' responses to the classes made me understand almost better how I could also respond to them. So that was one aspect of it, but also, and I know you didn't always like this, but I didn't keep the camera on very much. No, I knew that. It's beginning. totally fine with me. Totally fine. But in the me. beginning, I didn't keep it on at all because mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to see me. Mm -hmm. And it actually gave me confidence to try things I would never have tried if anybody else was in the room. Mm -hmm. So I tried all sorts of classes, I think even ones that you would have told me not to do, Book on the Foot. You well, book on the Foot, let me tell you, sister, you had the camera on for that one. I know, because by that time I was I was willing to try. And I, I, was like, like, I, would I like laughed you. my way through it because I was, I was terrible. Like around, I'd be looking around and there would be Jenny's, <laughs> Jenny's leg up in the air and I'd be like, oh my gosh, in my mind, I'm like, I want to say, stop the stop the class. I just need to just mark. I can't way. feel I'm anything in that in foot. And I was trying to balance this book on the foot. I couldn't, I can't feel anything on that foot, but I was trying my best and it was falling on my head. I mean, the book was constantly falling all over the place. I was laughing it hysterically because I was at least trying. And I have to say, I had as a result of that, I was walking better than I have in a very long time. I'm still not walking great. This COVID year has had, um, I've had a lot of, a lot of, uh, Hillary, I understand, you know, we've had a lot of loss in my family. Um, and the trauma of those losses have been really, really hard. And I think it's actually caused me, although I've done a lot of the classes, it's, I think it's taken away from my, from my physical, physically being able to benefit. Also, I've just, there's been confidence issues because of all that as well. But I keep trying and I keep coming back to doing it and going to the library. I actually also repeat doing the whole classes because um, you can play the classes and repeat. And I actually go back and do like the whole classes because some of those, I need the full time of, of doing it to actually get my whole, my body to simmer down and actually um, benefit from it. it. For me, it takes a long time to actually get the benefit because my, my body is just like, it, it, just, it just takes a lot to get it to, to, to feel it. So I'm sorry, I'm not letting you ask me questions. No, you're doing great. You're doing great. You don't need me to ask you questions. So, I mean, I think that, I think that, that um, I, you know, I've always said that there are things that you can get in private sessions that you can't get in classes. And there's things you can get in classes you can't get in private sessions. And one of the things that I think comes from classes pretty continuously for people is uh, a feeling of, oh, I'm in charge and I get to decide what's right for me right now and how much risk I want to take. And uh, I, can, I can learn. And I think when, when they're in private sessions, particularly ones where they tend to be more of the person lying on the table and the practitioner giving, uh, there can be a lot of deep, deep reorganization, but there's often less of a clarity on the person's part that they're the one who's learning that they're the one who's actually doing it, that they think somehow it's the practitioner who's doing it. They're not the one who's doing it. They're the one who's doing it in both cases, but in classes, this is so obvious, like a person's psyche can't, I don't think the person's psyche can trick them, right? They can't say to themselves, well, she touched me, therefore it must be something about her skill that allowed me to get better. You're in classes, you can either do or not do, uh, and you're learning this, in incredible gradation process, aren't you, Jenny? This incredible gradation of what is nothing 
what is too much, what is just right, what is a little bit. I mean, you're learning how to care for yourself. Well, you build on very small movements that I can do, you know, and I want to build on something Rachel said because it was so important, but from a different point of view. So I was never able to do yoga. In fact, my experience with yoga was going to classes and leaving in tears because I know, I think Rachel would teach it very differently, but the, my experience with yoga had been, and not this year again with online classes because I've started doing some yoga, but it had been that you're supposed to try and do these poses that I couldn't do because my body couldn't bend my knee or I couldn't I couldn't do whatever they were telling me to do and I was in a class and I was embarrassed I was embarrassed you know um but with with Feldenkrais it takes who you are whatever your body happens to be and it you work with where you are it takes and then and that's where it always that's the starting point for Feldenkrais it's you and who you are and where your body is and then you move little tiny motions and you you're always saying this Cynthia in, in when you're teaching and, and all the summit people said this too I loved the summit um, because it was it you you take whatever motion is being suggested and you figure it out for yourself you figure out what you can do and in the end it adds up to some something that helps you to do some practical thing it may be walking it may be reaching as Pamela said it may be whatever practical skill it is that you're is the final thing and it may not be something you actually realize until a few days later but it makes you feel lighter it makes you feel taller it makes you feel whatever or it doesn't it, you may have to do it a few times before you actually get that benefit but it's small motions add up to a bigger um, movement and that is how Feldenkrais works it used it starts with who you are and I think that is why it's always worked with me. And I think it's why I've always come back to Feldenkrais, um, despite my, my, my really dysfunctional body. And, um, and it's, it's the reason that I'm out of the wheelchair for at the moment, partially also because of COVID, I haven't had to use it. I don't really want to go back into it. Um, I don't want to go back to having to work on this campus. I'm trying to get them to not make me have to go back to work uh, in my office uh, because I, you know, I, I'm very happy not, I, I've, I, we, we won't go into that. But anyway, it's, it, I feel like I'm moving better because of the classes. Um, I'm really looking forward to starting the new sequence, whatever it is we're, we're going to do next. Um, and, and I have to say, working with the community of people around the world, um, I agree that it, with Hillary, it's helped uh, have this group of people who we felt, I felt very close to all year, has been wonderful. And um, I felt much closer to them than anybody else I was dealing with all year. I mean, that's, that's absolutely true. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Jenny. Uh, I think, uh, you know, people come to Feldenkrais, uh, people come into the Your Learning Body community for a really, a really wide variety of reasons. And we kind of have heard that today. I know we, Hillary talked about her flat feet. I know she's also been working with her knees, for example. And uh, you have Pamela who had some kind of neurological injury from coming out of a really active lifestyle. We have Rachel who's trying to get back into her body. We have Jenny, who's wanting to make some kind of reconciliation with her body and find what can I do? Can I, what can I do? Can I, can I go beyond uh, what I think I can do and find some, some ease, some comfort and some confidence that I can move and stand and walk and trust myself to not, to be able to do that and not have undue consequences from it. Uh, Elise, who would have been with us is, uh, would have talked a lot about um, her, her injury of, her, of a foot, a foot injury that happened for her. And she never tunes into classes. She loves just the library. 
and she's a very active uh, person. And we have a lot of men and women, actually. Um, it is more women than men, but that's kind of common in these fields anymore. I don't know why. And um, the uh, we have a and we have a lot of women who are uh, older people who are older who are really struggling with with movement really really struggling with movement because of things that have happened, and yeah it's beautiful isn't it Krish it is to hear people just share their their vulnerable stories she says compelling and impactful and I'm blown away I I feel the same way, so thank you so much Jenny for that I appreciate you joining us and and being willing to share your story because you do have one of those things going on that is quite uh, quite challenging. There's not a lot of fabulous options out there for chronic regional pain syndrome, people who are, are struggling with that. And I, I do think the Feldenkrais method can be one of them. And I and you've kind of um, you know inspired me to think that in fact classes, which is where I probably wouldn't have gone are actually, I can just see an entire online group of classes for people. Although I like, I like having people with mixed challenges in groups. I think it brings people out of their problem into a larger community, but I can, um, I can also see the value of having a group just for people with chronic regional pain syndrome too. So thank you, Jenny. Yeah, so let's give these women like a big uh, round of applause. Big round of applause. Oh, I don't know. Maybe she'll ask this. Pamela, do you feel like your hip, your limp has improved? Yeah, she says yes. Great. Listen, I'm going to put in the comments for you to go to yourlearningbody.com. Yourlearningbody.com is the opening of the membership. It opens once a year and open right now until June 1st. It's coming up quick now that it will close. So it's an opportunity to join the community or at least join the uh, uh, entry nine week course, Unlocking Your Learning Body. And uh, I just am so, um, I'm so pleased to have the opportunity to reflect with these four women. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for joining us in, in the comments and, um, and witnessing, witnessing them as they tell their stories. And please do send us email with your questions to support at futurelifenow.com. If you're like going, hmm, I don't know. Maybe it's for me, maybe it's not for me. I'm really honest. I mean, actually in the last couple of days, I've answered some emails in which I said, this is not what you need right now. You need something different. So let me talk to you about what I think you do need. Uh, I think it's gonna be a better match. So I'm a very honest person that way. So please feel free to send us notes and I'll get back to them as soon as I can over this holiday weekend. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Rachel. Bye-bye everybody. Yes, thanks for the beautiful testimonies. Mm.